As we talked about in Friday's show, he was slated to do an interview with George Stephanopoulos. And the question was whether George Stephanopoulos was going to try to massage him back into some form of actual living embodiment or whether he was going to put a a pillow over his face and smother the old man. And it turns out that he was going to put a pillow over his face and smother the old man. So Stephanopoulos wasn't asking particularly hard questions if Joe Biden were a sentient person and not a vegetable. But the problem is that Joe Biden is now rutabaga. So here was George Stephanopoulos asking Joe Biden, are you the same man you were when you took office? And remember, the stakes of this interview were the nomination, because if Joe Biden had appeared lively and sprightly, if his lie that his debate with Donald Trump was just an off night were true, then he might have been able to get this train back on the rails. But the interview was a disaster area. Every time he appears on television, for some odd reason, he won't project. And so it sounds as though his voice is going, like it's cracking. You can barely hear him. And he starts wandering randomly all over the verbal landscape in search of an idea. And here is George Stephanopoulos asking him, are you the same person you were when you took office? Are you the same man today that you were when you took office three and a half years ago? In terms of successes, yes. But what has all that work over the last three and a half years cost you physically, mentally, emotionally? Well, I, I just think it cost me a really bad night, bad run. What I'm asking you is uh, about your personal situation. Do you dispute that there have been more lapses, especially in the last several months? Can I run the 110 flat? No, but I'm still in good shape. Are you more frail? No. He's not more frail. <laughs> this did not go well. And you can hear Stephanopoulos. He's like, I'm gonna, he, he's, he's now sneaking behind the bed to pull the plug on the old end. Right? <laughs> That's what Stephanopoulos is doing right there because that interview, one of the people on the screen was going to exit that interview dead. It was either George Stephanopoulos for trying to massage Biden back into life or Biden with the plug pulled by George Stephanopoulos. So Joe Biden was asked by Stephanopoulos, when were you aware the debate was going poorly? And Joe Biden started wandering like an Alzheimer's patient who accidentally got out the front door. Did you ever watch the debate afterwards? I don't think I did, no. Well, what, I'm trying, what I want to get at is what were you experiencing as you were going through the debate? Did you know how badly it was going? Yeah, look, the whole way I prepared, nobody's fault mine. Nobody's fault but mine. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down, as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council, for explicit detail. And I realized about partway through that, you know, all the, I get quoted, the New York Times had me down at 10 points before the debate nine now or whatever the hell it is. The fact of the matter is that what I looked at is that he also lied 28 times. I couldn't, I mean, the way the debate ran, not my fault, no one else's fault, no one else's fault. But But it seemed like you were having trouble from the first question in, even before he spoke. Well, I just had a bad night. And then Joe Biden gets mad, right? Because again, he's he's a crotchety elderly fellow. And he says that he's very angry that Democrats want him to leave. And also only the Lord God Almighty could make him go. Last hour that Senator Mark Warner is is assembling a group of senators together to try and convince you to stand down because they don't think you can win. Well, Mark is a good man. We've never had that. He also tried to get the nomination too. Mark's not. Mark and I have a different perspective. I respect him. And if... Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi come down and say, we're worried that if you stay in the race, we're going to lose the House and the Senate. How will you respond? I've I've gone into detail with them. I've spoken to all of them in detail, including Jim Clyburn, every one of them. They all said I should stay in the race, stay in the race. No one said, none of the people said I should leave. But if they do? Well, it's like, (laughs) they're not going to do that. You sure? Yeah, sure. Look, I mean, if the Lord Almighty came down and said, Joe, get out of the race, I get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. If you are told reliably from your allies, from your friends and supporters in the Democratic Party, in the House and the Senate, that they're concerned you're going to lose the House and the Senate if you stay in, what will you do? I'm not going to answer that question. 
not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Well, he is being told that by his friends and allies. In fact, Jim Clyburn was booked on the Sunday shows. He wouldn't appear. He canceled on the Sunday shows. All the uncertainty surrounding Joe Biden's presidency is not great for the stock market, for the economy. You're seeing that also with regard to the French elections, the UK elections. Well, all that uncertainty means you probably should diversify at least a little bit into gold. See, since 1974, Saudi Arabia has sold oil solely in American dollars. That was huge for our global economic dominance. Now they want other options. They too are hedging their bets. If there's less demand for the American dollar, what happens to the value? Well, it's reasons like that. I feel it's important to diversify some of your savings into gold. You can do that with the help of Birch Gold. I'm not saying like take all your money and put it in gold. I'm saying you should do like some. Because right now, qualifying purchases by July 31st are eligible to get a one-of-a-kind limited edition golden truth bomb, which is a pretty cool item. The only way to claim your eligibility is by texting Ben to 989898. Protect your savings by diversifying away from the U.S. dollar with gold. Text Ben to 989898. Birch Gold will help you convert an old IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold for no money out of pocket. Right now, qualifying purchases will get a limited edition Golden Truth Bomb. You can show it to all your friends. Makes a great paperweight, too. Text Ben to 989898. That's Ben to 989898 today. And ask all of your questions to my friends over at Birch Gold. And then when you're ready to start investing, trust them with your gold investments. Text Ben to 989898 to get started. By the way, it is worth noting here that the quality of the audio is really bad, right? You can hear that buzzing in the background. Obviously, we work in a studio. One of the things that you do in a studio is you turn off the air conditioner. Okay, that's not the air conditioner in the background. The reason that the audio is so bad is because Joe Biden is speaking so softly that the mics are not properly picking him up. So they had to ratchet up the audio level in order to pick up the voice of the president of the United States because that's how weak he was in this interview. Stephanopoulos, for his part, was really trying to push Joe Biden over that cliff. Like Joe Biden is grabbing like a cartoon character onto the edge of the cliff with his fingernails. It's like Wile E. Coyote. You can see the fingernails digging into the rock as he gradually starts to fall down the cliff face. Here's George Stephanopoulos saying, dude, no one gets reelected with a 36% approval rating. And Joe Biden's like, well, anyway. What's your plan to turn the campaign around? You saw it today. How many, how many people do you get to draw crowds like I drew today? You find me more enthusiastic than today? You're the president. Huh? I mean, I, I don't think you want to play the crowd game. Donald Trump can draw big crowds. There's no question about that. He can draw a big crowd, but what does he say? <laughs> who does he have? I'm the guy supposedly in trouble. Mr. President, I've never seen a president 36% approval get reelected. Well, I don't believe that's my approval. Right? That's not what our polls show. That's not what his polls show. I mean, this is just George Stephanopoulos beating him with a two by four. And sure, that doesn't have a massive impact because George Stephanopoulos is five foot two and 80, 87 pounds soaking wet. But still, he's clobbering Biden here. So he asked Biden, will you feel guilty if you lose, right? Like if you stay in too long and then you lose to Trump, your legacy is that you turn the presidency back over to the guy you say is a threat to democracy. Are you going to feel guilty at all? Biden's like, what is guilt? What? I don't know. No, no. And if you stay in and Trump is elected and everything you're warning about comes to pass, how will you feel in January? I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job as I know I can do. That's what this is about. This interview is 22 minutes long, by the way. It was not an hour because Joe Biden is not capable of going an hour. CNN reported that after the interview, Team Biden thought he did amazing. But of course they're going to say that because what are they going to say? That he did horribly? So here is CNN reporting on the Biden team's reaction. The Biden campaign thinks that the interview last night did exactly what they wanted it to do. And uh, in their thinking, they think that it showed a president who could respond to these questions, do so in an articulate fashion, and really push back against the concerns about his cognitive health. So they're looking at this as a win, seeing it as a strong interview. And really what the president was doing in that interview was showing defiance, dismissing uh, the concerns and the critics uh, that about his candidacy. OK, there's only one problem. No one actually believes that. Now, listen, as a person who wants Donald Trump to win the presidency, I wish that the entire Democratic Party bought into this narrative. I wish they bought into the narrative that Joe Biden were doing just fine. Let me tell you, my synagogue, right, which is filled with Orthodox Jews who all think that Joe Biden is a terrible president. My synagogue is going to vote 105 percent for Donald Trump. I can tell you that there is a prayer that we do every week for the government of the United States in the middle of Shachri, which is the, the morning prayer. OK, and that prayer involves a prayer for the health of the president of the United States. Never has that prayer been said with more fervor than in my synagogue this weekend. 
because everybody who wants Trump to win is like, I hope that this guy lasts. Like, truly, he's an awful candidate. I hope he sticks around. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda.